Hello there, Chris Porter Information Specialist right today. The two cylinders, because the trouble is not very deep, they're putting two tall torpedo cylinders. Shower pump, which is very noisy. Porter downstairs, we're changing the boiler, 10 year guarantee on a nice gas laden boiler. Taking these out, I'm going to put a pressurised unvented cylinder in the loft. So, what we've got to do there, take out the 50 gallon big storage tank out of the loft and put in a 200 litre pressurised unvented indirect boiler cylinder. With an S plan set up, so the motorised valves are coming out, two brand new going in, new central heating pump. It's what we've got to think about up there water main. Uh, primary flow, primary return, balance cold, hot supply 22 mil, um, and a discharge pipe because it's pressurized. Get the discharge pipe to outside. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all this out, start getting some pipes up for our new cylinder, and I'll show you what it's going to look like during installation. Okay, then now we're up in the loft. So, this is what we've got we've taken out the little header tank. The little header tank, all that is, is just a little plastic tank with a little ball valve, and it just adds, lets water into the system to fill up the boiler and the radiator, so the central heating circuit. So that's completely separate to the water that we bath in. The water that we bath in, brush our teeth, wash our face from the basin, the bath, the toilets, etc. This one, your big 50 gallons of water here. So nine times out of 10, you have a big 50 gallon tank in your loft. If your loft actually is too small, you might have two little 25 gallons linked together. Sometimes you'll see a 25 gallon, which is half the size of this. Only problem with that, when you're running a bath, it doesn't fill up in time and it will run dry so you air lock and have endless problems so a nice size of that big 50 gallon tank so what we're going to do we're working up here so this obviously the cylinders are coming out downstairs the two cylinders copper vented cylinders they're coming out a vented cylinders all that means is is a breather pipe that goes over the storage tank so with expansion it can breathe and air will just expand into the storage tank so that's all coming out we're putting a pressurized cylinder up here we haven't got a lot of light, so what I always like to do, I like to get my, I like to get my loft light, put a little screw in there, put that up there, and then we can see a lot better. So what I would say, put that over there a little bit more. So what I would say, this is coming out, all the pipes coming out. Do a nice base for our cylinder, pressurized cylinder. Water main goes straight into the bottom of it, so the water main from the road straight into the bottom main pressure and pushes the hot water out the top of it at the same pressure going in. So you need good pressure for a vented cylinder, unvented cylinder. So this is all coming out. We'll have a look at this, rip out all the pipe work, and we start rebuilding up here. Don't forget the valiant boiler going downstairs, 10 year guarantee on that. All this nice new setup, no, no more noisy shower pumps. No more big 50 gallon storage water in your loft. No more header tank. It's all pressurized, modern, great day systems. 25 year guarantee on your cylinder, 10 on your boiler, all installation specialists. Here we go. Okay then, so old boiler was off. Very inefficient old boiler. Valiant 425, 25 kilowatt going in. Flue hole done. Flow no returns, I'm going to cut them into the new boiler. It's all just on the wiring now. We've got to obviously rewire this whole system with the S plan setup that we're doing. And that is about it. So that won't take long at all. Um, I've done my timbers upstairs ready for my cylinder. Here we go. Right, okay. So there's our unvented pressurized cylinder. What happens is your water main, your cold water main comes in straight into the bottom of the cylinder and pressurized water, mains pressure, will come out of the top when you open up a hot tap. So it's as simple as that, water main in, hot water out the top. Um, pressure vessel, because obviously when water heats up, it expands, so that expansion of water's got to go somewhere. So we've got a pressure vessel for that. We have a pressure vessel for the heating, which is gonna be going there. So there's all my setup. So um, that's the cylinder there. We've got the boiler pipes coming up here. So this is the pipe shot off the boiler, which is your primary flow, picks up the pump. Uh, what is important, I've got this little T-piece here, you see, that's important because there's no interruption in this pipe straight to the boiler. So if you can imagine, we, we don't want no valves, we don't want no valves between this pipe and where our heating vessel goes. Because when the heating and hot water's on, 
it will obviously the water will expand. So we need that expansion to go into our pressure vessel, which is going to be fitted there. That's fitted there at the moment. So that's going to be fitted there. So we don't want no interruption in this pipe. So straight off the boiler. So when the boiler's heating up, the expansion will go into the pressure vessel. If I was to put, say, this T piece over here, then potentially this pump could be turned off, closing the circuit to the boiler, so the boiler could be on, closing the circuit, so that boiler's heating up, heating up the water, and we cut off the supply to the expansion vessel. So, T piece, no interruption in that pipe, straight to the vessel, any valves get turned off, it's not gonna interrupt our pressure vessel at all. So it's all very, very important stuff. So, primary flow, pick up on the pump, Put a uh, motorized valve, so your motorized valve, your hot water, is going to be going on there, and that goes to your cylinder, so that will open up, give your hot water to 55 degrees, and I'll just wire in a cylinder thermostat set at 55 degrees. So as soon as it reaches 55 degrees, the boiler will shut down, that valve will close. Turn the room thermostat up, this will open, and it will fly around the heating. But because we've got a pump overrun boiler down there, if that, if that valve closes, and if that closes, once we reach temperature, the pump will stay on for five minutes. So in order to protect the boiler and to protect the pump, we're gonna add a bypass. So when that valve's closed, when that valve's closed, and so that pump stays on for five minutes, we've got an automatic bypass pumping back to the boiler, get rid of that latent heat, protect the boiler, and also protect the pump so the pump doesn't burn out. Okay, so it's all, it's all sorted. Always add drain off lowest points so you can drain the cylinder surface in or whatnot. We've got an immersion heat around the back that we're gonna wire up. Uh, it's going to be a wiring centre, so that's all going to be wired up, pump, motorised valves. So this is an S-plan setup. so motorised valves, in the thermostat, program, which is a high of heat in the hot water. Everything will be wired up, for, um, boiler, and that's it. So nice and easy, I've not got a lot long left to do here. This take me about, with all the timbers and everything, probably about four hours, but um, we'll be filled up today, get a bar pressure in that system, get this all pressurised, um, and yeah, do a video of when it's all done and all lagged up and protected in a minute thank you very much okay then here we go all done all in a day's work right pressure vessel for the heating as i was saying earlier vessel for the hot water s plan setup all it means is two two ports you need to have a two port with an unvented cylinder anyway so your central heating pump your two port for your hot water your two port for your heating your bypass valve, which is all explained all lagged up all filled up all running all beautiful, um, all signed off. 10 year guarantee with a boiler, 25 guarantee with a cylinder, lovely.